Good morning, Dan Cummins, Chevrolet and Buick in Paris, Kentucky. Hope you are having an incredible week and an incredible weekend. I know we are. We have been selling a ton, a ton of cars. We've also been training and learning a lot uh, this week and this month. So thanks for joining us. We're going to have a little fireside chat this morning, talk about a couple things. Everybody, good morning. First things first, we need to get Mike Brown. Where's he at? Uh, Mike, you leaving the meeting this morning? Oh, Mike, go. Yeah, I'm good. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike's going to pass. He volunteered last week, but uh, that's okay. That's all right. We're we'll, we'll going to get through it without him today. Big Mike. Uh, how's everybody feeling this morning? Everybody feeling all right? How's everybody feeling if I tell you the BDC's got close to 90 appointments already today? We got good weather. We're going to have lots of people up in here. It's going to be awesome. I want to pop in here real quick. A little bit of what our customers are saying about you today. Let's go to All right, Lisa Ramsey Harris, that is a deal that I am working on and working with. Those customers will actually be in here today. They bought a uh, 2010 Buick Enclave from us. And that 2010 Buick Enclave got driven close to 10,000 miles uh, without an oil change. And the oil got real thin and it caused some damage to the vehicle. So I have been working with, uh, this is actually the mom here that's posted this review, but I've been working with the son and the daughter and they're gonna be in here today. We're gonna figure out a way to help them get into something else. So Brad, I'm gonna need your team to be ready so you guys can help me on this one today. They just bought the deal. Are just bought the car a few months ago, um, so you guys are going to help me out of that one. That's one of the things that I love about uh, people's ability to reviews on Facebook, Google, so on and so forth. Sometimes it can be challenging trying to just keep up with everything, especially in such a high volume store where we have so many customers and so many potential things can come up. So it's, it, it can be challenging to stay up with it, but the customers having a voice really helps us be who we are. You know, this particular customer could have just been pissed off somewhere out there in the world. I never would have known about it. But instead, they get an opportunity to post some reviews, and I'm going to get an opportunity to sit down with them today and make things right, because that's what we do. So we won't read that particular review, because um, it's long, but let's see. Uh, let's go down here. Met with Nicholas Cox today and purchased our first family vehicle. The stress he had to go through tonight to make everything perfect was no exaggeration, but he took it like a champ. I would definitely recommend him to any of my family and friends. Thank Nicholas for the best car buying experience. All right, this one says great service. I'd recommend this dealership. That's for uh, Robbie Lee and our service department. Five stars, five stars, love all the five stars. Uh, Brianna Perry, that's the same people that I talked to you about just a minute ago. Brianna Perry, same people I talked to you about just a minute ago. Uh, this is our fifth purchase and our fourth purchase working with Ben. With a huge selection and friendly service, Ben always works to get us a great deal. Evan worked with us in finance and was very helpful with closing and keeping us in our target payment range. Dan Cummins continues to be our dealership of choice by providing us with exemplary service. <laughs> Drove over two hours to get our car because of the great warranty. Laura just made her purchase an even better experience with her great service. She was very personable and very easy to talk with. We will be back again. Jonathan Dawson, that guy came by to visit us. How, how'd we like that? Did you guys like 
like uh, talking with Jonathan Dawson a little bit, he was good, right? He was really good. So it looks like he put a, uh, a little review there on us, which we appreciate. But he didn't buy a car, so we're not going to read it. Uh, let's see. I've never purchased a how to state vehicle, and Dan Cummins made the process nightmare free. I received great communication from Rachel and Dan, and they have made the process extremely easy. I cannot be more appreciative of them. Nice job. <laughs> Nick Cox, because he's the man, R.C. Hazard, you know how R.C. is. Great experience. They always take care of their customer as number one priority. I am buying my second car with them, and I can't say anything other than a great service and that I recommend this dealership. Nick Cox is a great salesman. God, he is. <laughs> Nick Cox, Nick Cox, Nick Cox. Why do I keep seeing Nick Cox? Nobody else. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, are you guys sending out all your podium reviews, podium requests, getting your reviews, giving your customers awesome experiences? Nick Cox, Nick Cox, Nick Cox. Okay, I can't read. I love you, Nick Cox. You're doing a good job, man. Can't be a Nick Cox meeting. Um, okay, so doing good on the reviews. I think we're at 4.7 with Google, uh, 4.5 or 6 with Facebook, which Facebook is tough, guys, I'm telling you. So easy for people to just to you know however they feel at the time. That's what we're used to doing uh, in this time and day. So referring back to Mr. Uh, Dawson earlier earlier in the week and just some of the things that I personally uh, learned, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the most important person in the room, which is you and you and you and you and you and you, because we talk a lot about the dealership, right? Everyone knows where the dealership's been, where the dealership's headed, the dealership's goals, uh, all that we've accomplished, you know, as far as selling our new cars and the new Chevys, we're doing great there. Our used car sales are right back to where they uh, were six months ago when we had a little different process. We're pacing well into the 900 cars this month. So we all know what the dealership's doing, right? We all know that. What I want to talk about is what are you doing? What are you doing to change your outcomes? Okay, Mr. Dawson, is that my phone? No, my phone's over there. Somebody else's phone. Mr. Jonathan Dawson uh, spoke with us earlier, or we actually watched this video a couple weeks ago. And in that video, he talked about the accumulation, right? One snowflake just melts in your hand, but you get a couple trillion snowflakes and it shuts down a city. And all the different little steps along the way that create, ultimately create, you know, whatever outcome uh, that is created. So I started thinking about that a little bit and I thought, wait a minute, we all know definition of insanity, we've heard it a million times, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So I started thinking, what am I doing and is it the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results or am I making some changes in my life? So I started to look and, well, my morning routine is pretty much the same nowadays. It's a good morning routine, it's a healthy morning routine. I get up early, I do my gratitude list, I do my goals, I go work out, you know, I come to work, so on and so forth. So it's a good routine, it's not a bad routine, but it is the same. It's the exact same thing that I've been doing for a long time. Nothing's really changed. I haven't been reading as many books as I used to read. I haven't found that extra time because I've kind of gotten into, you know, what I do. So I started thinking about you guys individually, and I thought, hmm, who around the dealership is doing the same thing today that they were doing last week, that they were doing last month, that they were doing six months ago and expecting different results? Anybody in here doing the same thing this week that they did six months ago? Raise your hand. Be honest. Okay? There's quite a few of us, right? So then I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, okay, well, Dan... Dan Kroll came up to me the other day because he noticed a problem out on the lot. He noticed, and you guys have all noticed, that our, our numbers on our active lot, on our dongles, have been dwindling, right? More and more cars are not showing up in our GPS system. You guys have noticed that? We're having to run around and try to find them, right? Well, Josh and Dusty decided to spend a lot of money on this system a long time ago a long time ago, because they wanted to make a change, right? They wanted to change the way we were able to find our cars to make it more efficient, to our customers, make the process faster, which we talked about earlier in the week, right? 
We have to entertain, we have to educate, we have to be efficient, we have to make it easy. So Josh and Dusty spent a lot of money on that, trying to, trying to uh, make that happen. Now the numbers are starting to dwindling, dwindle a little bit. And Dan, instead of just complaining about the problem, Dan came to me and he said, hey, Glenn, I want to take this on my shoulders. I want to pick this up. I'm going to come in on my, on my day off, and I'm going to go around these cars. I'm going to try to find out what has dongles in it, what doesn't have dongles in it. I'm going to try to find out what's in range, what's not in range, why it's not in range, so on and so forth. Took that initiative and has been doing that this last week. By doing that, he got me looking, and I'm thinking, man, we don't even have a satellite over there on the corner of that, of that warehouse building. Anything that's up on that hill can't show up in active lock. It can't. doesn't matter whether you put a dongle in it or not. It can't show up. How many cars are on that hill? A lot, right? A lot of cars up over on that hill. So because Dan made that little change, we're going to make a little change. We've contacted Active Lot. They're going to give me some pricing. We're going to see about getting some of these satellites, either add another one or get one moved or something so that we can get all that stuff in range so you guys can be better at what you do, right? So we can make that change. I thought, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive of Dan to take that on his shoulders and want to do that. Then I started thinking about some other guys that have made some changes or that are trying to make some changes and I've seen like Manny and, and Luis and George and Josue and Joel, they've been working hard with, you know, with the, uh, what do you guys call yourselves now? I called you the five amigos, but you said that wasn't good. Uh, so anyways, they've been trying to make some changes to get us more in front of the, the Spanish culture, right? There's this whole culture of uh, Hispanics out there that maybe maybe don't speak English, maybe they do speak some English, but not so good. They're a little uncomfortable coming into the dealership. So these guys started making some changes on their own, making some videos, making some ads, going out to festivals, handing out cards, doing different business cards, trying to make this a warm and welcoming place so that they can make that individual change. I thought, that's good. That's really, really good. Now, so then again, I had to like ask myself, like. I'm trying to push for a thousand cars. We're trying to get this dealership like to this whole another level. But we're still just I'm still personally kind of doing the same thing every day. So that's kind of my question for you guys this morning. I want you to just take a look inside and think, okay, am I just going through the routine and doing what I do and doing it the same way every single day and expecting different results? <coughs> Because if we're doing that, we're all in a little bit of trouble. When I say trouble, it's hard to think that this dealership's in trouble, right? This dealership's selling 900 cars, making all kinds of money. Everybody knows it's in the industry. We've got inventory all over the place. We're highly successful. We've come so far. How can you say that we're in trouble? Well, when we're standing still, we're in trouble. When we're doing the same, we're in trouble. When we're comfortable, we're in trouble, right? We've talked about this many times before. We're most comfortable when? Right before death. Who said that? Somebody's paying attention. Is that you back there? Mr. Jacob, sauna tag. When we get comfortable, we're most comfortable right before death. So I want you to individually take a look at yourselves. Figure out what can I do just a little bit different. Now, we have such a big place and sometimes there's little things individually that you have going on that can sometimes get in the way of you wanting to make some changes. You, you need something to be normal. You need something to be comfortable. Okay. Uh, for example, and, and we're just chatting here because we're all friends, you know, uh, Josh comes and his family, sometimes Isaiah has some, some medical stuff that they have to deal with and that gets, that gets heavy on them sometimes. <coughs> And Isaiah's been having to deal with some stuff and, and, and just had some tests and stuff, and he's fine, and he's going to be he's gonna be fine, but they carry that at home. You know, he carries that. Our friend Trey Congleton back here, he's gone through some stuff over the last couple months. You guys might not know about it. He's gone through some stuff, but he carries that at home. Tim Walton, been going through some stuff, right? Tim's been going through some stuff, and he carries that home. Terrence has made some changes in his life, right? I was so proud of Terrence Tuesday morning. Do you know where Terrence was Tuesday morning? First time I've ever seen this in my entire life. Okay, 
We played basketball Tuesday morning as a, as a group, a bunch of guys, 6.30, Tuesday morning. Terrence comes walking in with a baby, okay? He's got a, a, does Lane know this? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Terrence comes walking in, and he's got his baby. He's, he's, you know, he's, 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 when Terrence left us, he wasn't making very good decisions, okay? Now Terrence has got his baby. He's, he's, he's back with us now, and he's trying to make the right decisions. But he walks in. He's got the baby. The baby's sleeping in the car seat, so the baby's good, right? And he sets the baby over here, and, and he's not very far, you know, he's not very far away, but he's checking on that baby like every, every five minutes, just making sure the baby's asleep. But he didn't allow this, this baby, this life, this change to keep him from still doing some of the things that he needs to do, which is take care of his body, be healthy, be a part of a group, be a part of a team. He didn't allow that to get in the way. Instead, he's stepping up, he's being a, a great father, Actually, I see him with the baby far more than I ever see Lane. No offense, Lane. But Terrence is doing a great job. But he's made that change, and he's changing his life, and he's trying to keep making moves in the right direction. I'm very proud of him. But there's stuff, right? Tommy's got some stuff. His wife's been sick, and he's been dealing with some stuff there. And I understand that, that you got a lot going on at home. I get it. And so time is precious to him right now. Time with his family is very precious to him right now. So we all have these little things, and what's great is what I saw yesterday with all of us in the pink and all of us together. What's great is that even though we each individually have these little things, these little struggles that we kind of have to deal with outside of these buildings, I just want you to know that this is a safe place for all of you. This is a place that you can come, and we're going to lift you up on our shoulders and do everything that we can for you. Like, my doors are always open. Sometimes I'm on the phone. Sometimes you might have a hard time tracking me down. But I promise my doors will just sit at my desk for a while. I'll come back through there, I promise. But my door is always open. And I'm there for you guys. And Sam and your, your managers and your team are there for you guys. And Josh and Dusty, they're there for you guys. And even though you have this stuff kind of going on, I want you to know that here together, we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. As long as we remember that we got to keep getting better. And we got to keep pushing. And we got to keep driving, and we can't just keep doing the same stuff over and over and over again and expecting different results. If we don't continue to grow and get better, then we can't lift each other up. If we don't continue to educate ourselves and get better and sell more cars and get in better financial positions and, and figure out how to relate with our, uh, with our spouses better and relate with our kids better and find a good work-life balance, if we don't figure out how to change a little bit and get uncomfortable and do all those things, then this won't be a safe place anymore. It'll fall apart. You guys following me? So, I personally am committed to making some changes. I'm going to look at different aspects of the dealership that we've been doing for a very long time and see if we can't make some changes. See if we can't ruffle things a little bit. Get a couple more satellites out there so we got a better active lot system, right? <clears throat> looking at some different, oh, don't tell them, but looking at some different uh, you know, software problems or products for our customer management type stuff, like dealer software, stuff like that. Looking at some different software products. Looking at some different desking tools where you can get a lease and a retail pencil like that. Instead of taking, how long does it take now to get a lease and a retail pencil? It takes a long time. I was talking to Jason Barnett yesterday. It's really funny. That plaque, have you guys seen the plaque in my office? It shows January 2011, 131 cars. And then it shows every single month on that board, right, all the way up to December of 2016, where we sold 869 cars. And it shows every single month. And I was talking to Jason, and I was just thinking, golly, it's so crazy to know that I was, like, a part of every one of those months, like, Every single one, and then the more I looked at it, I was like, how many months is that? And I counted it, and it was 72 months. There's 72 months on that plaque. That's our standard contract, right? That's, a, that's our average contract around here. We put somebody in 72 months. So think about, for those of you that have been here a long time, or those of you that at least heard the stories about this place, think about everything we've done in 72 months, Okay? Two remodels, add an extra inventory, buy an extra land, staffing going from 45 people to 268, babies being born, marriages, and all this stuff, right? All this stuff is happening. That's the length of contract we're putting people in on a car. We need to be putting them in some leases. Give them three years so they can come back and get a new one. Finance doesn't want to hear it, but I'm telling you, we 
got to take care of our customers. We got to get better. So I'm looking at different software pro products that we can do. I'm studying Facebook and how we can we can unify some business pages and do things a little bit different. I made sure to read a little bit this morning. It's tough for me to read in the morning. I get a little tired when I read. I made sure to read a little bit this morning. Just making little tiny adjustments here and there because each snowflake, right? It'll add up. We'll have trillions of snowflakes and then we can shut down the city. Okay? So today. BDC's got you hooked up. BDC's got tons and tons of appointments. Yesterday started off really, really slow, and then was crazy last night. Who was all here past eight last night? <laughs> a lot of us were here past eight last night. So yesterday started off a little slow, and then we finished very, very strong. I think it showed 50 deals in the system, right, Mo? 50 deals in the system on Friday, which is what our target is for Friday. So wonderful. Today we've got all the appointments. As you're out there with your customers, please listen to Mo, okay? I know Mo's been jumping in, he's been trying to teach you guys a lot of different things. Sometimes the question that we ask is, or, or I hear it, you know, I said the same thing, I said the same thing, I said the same thing. How come they're buying from you, they're not buying from me? Because it's not always it's exactly what you say, it's how you say it. So look at your delivery, look at yourself in the mirror. Figure out how you're approaching your customers. What are your current steps and what can you change to make them a little bit better? Are you offering them a cup of coffee when they first get here? Are you taking them out on the lot when they first get here? Or are you sitting them down on the computer, pulling up that one vehicle that they talked about and letting them sit there for 15 minutes while you go track it down because there's no dongle in it because Dan just started a few days ago and we're not caught up yet. Which, which process are you following? And if it's not the one that's getting you the results that you want, then change it. Make a little change. Okay? Let's go out there and have a big day today. Come on. Breakfast next Saturday. That's what I'm talking about. Tasha, bring us some breakfast. Yes, customers first. We are definitely blessed in this dealership. But we've got to get a little bit better. What about you? What about you? Are you waking up every day doing the exact same thing? Make any changes? Are you pushing yourself? Are you trying to get a little bit better? Because it's all the little tiny things. If you can do each little tiny thing a little bit better, then in the end you can get those results that you're searching for. But if you're doing each thing exactly the same way every single day, you're never going to break out of your comfort zone. You're never going to get in here. So we're going to get better here at Dane Cummins. We're going to make changes. We're going to continue to push. We're going to continue to thrive. We're going to continue to grow. Hopefully, you guys will be out here to join us. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.